Welcome back everyone to Behind Your Basketball. It's been an awesome NBA season with a ton of surprises, a lot of great games down the stretch with competitive basketball and teams fighting for playoff seeding. It's been great to cover these NBA games for my channel viewers. If you haven't caught my play-by-play -play live streams before, I definitely recommend it as I'm going to be covering some great games throughout the playoffs. In this video, I'm going to do my 2021 NBA playoff predictions, which include my predictions, the first ever play-in games as well for seeds number 7 through 10. This playoff here, it was tough for me to predict this playoff as uh, there were just so many injuries with players in and out of the lineups, especially the Western Conference. Stay tuned as I feel like the West is just totally up for grabs. Stay tuned for upsets out in the Western Conference. But without any further ado, we will get started here at the bottom part of the screen as I'm going to start with the NBA play in games first. Appointment TV, national TV. Wednesday night, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. The Lakers will take on the Golden State Warriors here. Massive game going down. LeBron versus Curry. Unfortunately for the Lakers, injuries have hurt them throughout the season. They do need to get back healthy. This could potentially propel them here in the playing game to give them that motivation, jolt them, and get them right back on track to help out their team chemistry. The Lakers going to have to be fully healthy, though, with that trio LeBron, Anthony Davis, Dennis Schroeder to make that run. Last season in the bubble, they start out slow, 3-5 and five in their first eight, and then they started to get better and better and won the NBA title. And uh, the, the defending champions here looking to do it again. But their role players will need to be a million times better in order to get them back on that NBA final stage once again for the Lakers. The thing is, is that they're going to be playing in this one game against Golden State. And Golden State's heating up at the right time. Dangerous, and they closed out the season on a six-game winning streak. Steph Curry has been the reason why. He had a historic month of April, averaged over 37 points per game, shot the ball 46.6% from three-point range for the two-time MVP, having his best season on his 12-year career. Even when Curry struggled, when he went 4-for-24 four from the perimeter in back-to-back -back games on May 10th and 11th against Utah and Phoenix, Andrew Wiggins stepped up against Phoenix, scored 38 points. Jordan Poole scored 20 points from the bench in those two games. And Poole coming off a career high as well, 38 points against the Pelicans on May 14th. So he has stepped up. Juan Toscano Anderson has stepped up off the bench. They have a true veteran leader with Draymond Green as well, who's averaging a career high almost around nine assists per game this season. Golden State's defense has improved a ton from where they were at the start of the season. They gave up 125 points to Brooklyn in their season opener. Surrendered 138 points on Christmas to the Bucks. I'm going to take the healthy team here in this matchup in a one-game series. Watch out for Steph Curry as I will take the healthy team with the Golden State Warriors against the LA Lakers who's trying to get back to uh, being healthy as that will put pressure on the Lakers sending them into the single-game elimination against Memphis versus San Antonio. I've got Golden State moving on to be the number seven seed taking on Phoenix in the first round. Now I'll take a look at the single game elimination. Memphis the nine seed taking on San Antonio the 10 seed. The Grizzlies already have that playing game experience. They lost in the playing game last season against Portland and here they are back in it. Memphis two and one against the Spurs this season. The Grizzlies lost the season opener and then they won back to back games on the 30th of January and February 1st against the Spurs. What's impressive for Memphis is that they won both of those games back to back without their big man, Jonas Valashunas, who is having a terrific season. Number three in the NBA with 12.5 rebounds per game for Valashunas. And I feel like he's going to be the difference maker in this matchup. For the Spurs, they struggle to score inside the interior. They don't really have like a dominant big that can control the glass score inside. They also miss down or they miss knockdown shooters on their team. They're 27th in most rebounds allowed per game. And they are struggling. They've only won two games out of the last 12 for San Antonio, which includes a loss to the Phoenix Reserves on Sunday when San Antonio played their starters and the Suns rested their starters. So in this matchup here, I'm going to take Memphis to take on the Lakers in a single game elimination. Memphis will move on and it will eliminate San Antonio. And now the pressure is on for the Lakers. Single game elimination. The Lakers are 3-0 against the Grizzlies this season. The Grizzlies rely on the third most two-point attempts in the league. The thing is, the Lakers... They are top five in their interior defense, and I feel like this is going to be a de defensive type of battle, but when push comes to shove, I've got the Lakers winning in this game. They've held Memphis to under 95 points twice this season. As I've got the Lakers surviving in this matchup, we'll move on to take on Utah as the eight seed for LA. 
And now move on to the Eastern Conference playing the right side of the playing games. The Celtics, the number 7 seed, taking on the Washington Wizards, the number 8 seed. I'm a Celtics fan, if you guys didn't know. A rough season for Boston. Terrible step back this season. And what should have been a contending year? Top 4 in the East. Turned out to the Celtics being a 7 seed in the playing game. Injuries without a fully healthy roster throughout the season with players in and out every single game. Along with a lot of one-on-one -on -one iso ball, hero ball, not relying on their teammates to pass the ball to, to make the extra pass and attack the bucket. Instead, the Celtics settle for a low percentage jumper as their 25th in assists per game and don't start attacking for some, some reason in the second half when they're down by 20 plus points, only to fall, fall just short and lose by one or two possessions. As for the Celtics as well, their front court still struggling, could not get a dominant big in the offseason or at the trade deadline. And then... As for Boston, struggling around the perimeter, defending the three ball has been a problem lately also, along with turning over the basketball quite a bit. No Jalen Brown as well, as he's the tone setter for the team. That's going to be rough here for the Celtics, as they're going to be playing on the Washington Wizards team that has had a major turnaround this season. Washington started the season 0-5. and Their starting center, Thomas Bryant, suffered a season-ending injury 10 games into the season. They got Russell Westbrook, a triple-double machine. Bradley Beal, number two in scoring behind Steph Curry in the NBA. Washington's defense went from 28th in defensive rebounds last season to now 8th in the NBA. The Wizards have won the last 17 out of 23 games. This team is on a roll. As I feel like the Celtics are going to have a ton of trouble containing Bradley Beal. And I'm going to take the Washington Wizards to win this game. And to move on to being a number 7 seed. To take on the Brooklyn Nets in the first round. And the Celtics in trouble as they will fall into the single game elimination round. Now we'll take a look at number 9 versus number 10. Single game elimination. Indiana taking on Charlotte. The Pacers dealing with some injuries. Key players down the stretch of the season. Malcolm Brogdon, their top scorer, has missed games down the remaining end of the season here. Along with Miles Turner, who's been injured since mid-April. The Pacers last in the NBA in offensive rebounds. Missing Turner's presence inside. 26th in rebounding. 25th in points allowed. And also dead last in offensive rebounds. And the Hornets, that's what they drive upon. Second chance points. Number six in offensive rebounds per game. Charlotte, another surprise team here. Hasn't appeared in the playoffs since 2016. Haven't won a playoff series since 2002. And they're going to have to do it without their number two scorer, Gordon Hayward, who hasn't played since early April. Still not back. Good news, though. LaMelo Ball is back. He's been back since May 1st to save Charlotte season. The Pacers have losing records in the season series against all three of these playing teams in the East. I think it's going to be a close game. But I do like Charlotte here in this type of matchup to move on to take on Boston in the single game elimination. I will take the Hornets to move on eliminating Indiana. And now that will bring up single game elimination. Number 7 Celtics taking on number 10 Hornets. Throwback to that Sunday afternoon a couple weeks ago. That Boston got shredded from the perimeter. Charlotte knocked down 21 three-point shots. The Celtics simply did not show up for that game against Charlotte. And right here once again... When they get the biggest game on the line to determine the season. I will predict in this game that the Celtics fail to show up once again. They will be a no-show in this case scenario. As the Hornets are not to be taken lightly at all. They've lost the last five straight games in a row for Charlotte. Four of those games are tough teams that they lost against. The Nuggets, the Clippers, the Knicks, the Wizards. The Celtics have played down to the competition multiple times this season. They got swept by the Kings, swept by the Pelicans. They went 1-2 and two in the season series against the Pistons, Cavs, and the Bulls. And unfortunately right here, this is going to be the dagger to end the Celtics' seasons, I, I predict. As this should as well, I predict, send Danny Ainge and Brad Stevens out the door for Boston. I feel like they just need a new voice for the Celtics here. It's going to lead to the firing of those two as I've got Charlotte moving on to take on the Sixers. As that is... A W of a season for Charlotte as not many people expected them to make the playoffs. But I predict that they will be the 8th seed to take on Philadelphia in the first round. So now we'll take a look at the Western Conference first round. Left side of the screen here. The number 1 seed, the Utah Jazz, will take on the 8th seed, the LA Lakers. Both of these teams dealing with injuries. Donovan Mitchell hasn't played in over a month. Expected to come back during the playoffs. Mike Conley missed 9 games during the month of May due to injury. Utah needs these two players to make a run with Mitchell and Conley. But it could take a while for Donovan Mitchell to come back and get up to game speed as he is the main focal point of the offense. The thing that I feel that Utah needs is that 
consistent scoring option on their roster that can take over games. They do have Jordan Clarkson, but he's the sixth man on the team. They need a starter, I feel like, that plays big minutes that can take over games. Bohan Bogdanovich has done that sometimes when Mitchell has been down, though. He scored 48 points against Denver on May 7th, but five days later, he he followed it up with only 12 points against Portland. The Lakers looking to carry over that playing game momentum. Utah attempts the third most shots from the perimeter in the league. Lakers top five defense in defending the three ball. This should be a good series. The, the last time that a eight seed beat a one seed was back in the 2012 Eastern Conference first round when the Sixers upset the Bulls. The Lakers, I feel like, will get stronger and stronger and stronger and put on an upset here. I've got the Lakers in seven over Utah to pull off the upset and move on into the second round. So I had said at the beginning of the this video here that the Western Conference pay attention to upsets because I think that this conference in the West is totally open. I think we're going to see a lot of upsets in the Western Conference. Now move on next matchup. Number four seed, the LA Clippers taking on the number five seed, the Dallas Mavericks. Rematch of last season's playoffs. Entering this playoffs, the Clippers have something to prove for as they fell 3-1 in the second round last year against the Denver Nuggets. They're not as deep as last season's team, but they are balanced. They have Two really good go-to scores with Kawhi and Paul George, along with multiple defenders aligned in their roster. The Clippers acquired the Rajon Rondo with a trade deadline to give the Clippers a boost and watch out for play playoff Rondo to be unleashed here throughout the playoffs. The Clippers, for them, no no one has started over 55 games this season, and they have managed to have 15 different starters, but as well as staying afloat in the top four in the conference throughout the season for the Clippers, even though they've had multiple starters in and out with players resting for the playoffs. Puzzling, though, for the Clippers that they lost games against Houston and Oklahoma City to close out the season when the Rockets and Thunder are playing for the top pick, battling it out here while the Clippers are... They basically have around their seeding range... They had it locked around that range between a four or three, but... It's just puzzling how they lost those last two games here. For Dallas, they have tremendously improved from what they were to start a season. Dallas found themselves in 13th place in the West back in January, behind the Pelicans in the standings. The Mavs completely flipped on the switch after the All-Star break. They went from the worst three-point shooting team in the NBA in the first quarter of the season, and then they picked up mid-pack and now ended the season around mid-pack mid, mid shooting the three ball. Luka Doncic, incredible talent he is. You know that Luka is going to come in prepared, get ready to play some postseason basketball like he did last year on Kobe Bryant's birthday, hitting the game winner over the Clippers on a step-back three at the left wing. Tim Hardaway Jr., he caught fire at the right time. He's going to have to look to transfer that with consistency over to the playoffs as well. That will be a big key here for Tim Hardaway Jr. And they're going to have to need a healthy Chris Stas Porzingis in order to pull off this upset. Kawhi for the Clippers is going to get plenty of rest here, which will be beneficial for Kawhi. I will predict in this series, the Clippers to win this series. It will be an all-LA second round. I've got the Clippers winning this series in 6-4-2 to take on the Lakers. Now we'll take a look at the number three versus number six series in the West. The Denver Nuggets will take on the Portland Trail Blazers. For the Nuggets, they managed to stay afloat, finished third in the Western Conference. They did not bounce back to the playing game, even though, unfortunately for Denver, they had a season-ending injury to one of their lead players, their point guard, Jamal Murray. Late in the season, more injuries started to pile up for the Nuggets with players missing time, and Nikola Jokic has carried this season. Or carry this team throughout the season. Availability has been a big key. That's why he's the favorite to win MVP. Denver took the first 12 out of 15 games after Murray went down. Michael Porter Jr. has improved incredibly this season for Denver. Here's the thing, though. Jamal Murray took over games last season in the playoffs. There were some epic Murray versus Mitchell battles in the first round against Utah. Denver started to lose games down the closing stretch of the season. It's quite concerning here for the Nuggets. That they lost against teams that's more so playoff competition around their mark. And then the other thing that's concerning here is that in place of Jamal Murray, they're going to have a rookie point guard with Facandu Campazzo, who is yet to play in the playoffs and have playoff experience. So this could be tough here without Murray in the postseason. They just need to find a guard here who can take over games. Jokic and Porter are going to have to carry for Denver, but I feel like they need another third scoring option here that can take over the games just like Murray did last season, and that's what Portland drives upon is scoring in their backcourt as that's their strength here. They highly, they are, they rely highly upon the three ball, and they got 
effective perimeter shooters lined up around their team. Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, Norman Powell, they have a ton of firepower that can take over games defensively, specifically the interior defense for Portland. That's been their Achilles heel, their weak spot for the Blazers. But once again, they've got red hot here down the stretch of the season. They won their last 10 out of 12 games to uh, make sure that they got in as the sixth seed and not in the playing game. So they won games when it mattered the most. And they also have Damian Lillard that can take over games. And that's where I like the Blazers to win the series, to pull off the six versus three upset. I've got Portland in six over the Denver Nuggets. Four to two the series. I've got Portland moving on to the second round. Now I'll take a look at the next series here at the bottom left corner of the screen in the first round. Closing out the West, the number two seed, the Phoenix Suns. We'll take on the number seven seed, the Golden State Warriors. Best road record in the NBA for Phoenix at 24 and 12 this season. They haven't really dealt with much injuries this season either. This is a young team. Two seasons ago, Phoenix finished with a record of 19 and 63. The leadership of Chris Paul coming in has put this team soaring, taking flight over the top to be a number two seed. In the West. I did not predict this as well. I knew that they would uh, make the playoffs, but I did not think that they'd be up to a two seed after going last season 8 and 0 in the bubble. They are efficient at both sides of the court for Phoenix. But the thing here is that they have some puzzling losses lately down the stretch. That they got destroyed by the Spurs, lost by a ton against the Hawks. They also lost against the Lakers and Golden State in the final week and a half. And they don't have much playoff experience in their team besides Chris Paul. So I'm going to throw in another upset here. Steph Curry on his road throughout the playoffs. I feel like Curry's just going to be taking over games and shooting his way throughout the playoffs. And even when Curry struggled, where he shot the ball 1 for 11 from the perimeter in the last matchup against Phoenix, Golden State still beat Phoenix because Andrew Wiggins stepped up. He dropped 38 in that game. So I think Golden State, with, a, with their playoff experience with Curry and Dream and Green, I think that they could pull off an upset here. So this Western Conference bracket, I said at the beginning of this video, I think it's up for grabs and just upset City all around here. So we look at the West now. The Lakers, the 8th seed, will take on the 4th seed, the Clippers. And then the 6th seed, Portland, will take on the Warriors, the 6th versus 7 in the second round. And I had Golden State beating the Suns in 7, 4-3. So now we're going to take a look at the right side of the bracket. The Sixers, the one seed, will take on the Charlotte Hornets. Philadelphia will need a healthy Joel and B to make a run here in this playoffs. It starts here for Philadelphia. When healthy and B, it's been, on a, been a force on the court. He's got career highs in scoring and shooting this season. The entire offense goes and revolves around Joel Embiid. Philadelphia is 39-12 and 12 this season with Embiid on the court. The Sixers are full of defenders. That I feel like it's going to give Charlotte a ton of trouble. This is an extremely tough matchup for Charlotte. Looking at it as Charlotte struggles to defend the interior. And Joel Embiid posted three double-doubles against Charlotte this season as the Sixers swept Charlotte this season in their game. So this is going to be a tough matchup, I feel like, to this regard. And this is where I'm going to take in this matchup Philadelphia in a sweep 4-0 over Charlotte. Now move on to the next matchup, the 4 versus the 5. I don't think anybody expected these two teams to be up to these seeds in the playoffs. The New York Knicks get a four seed. They're going to take on the Atlanta Hawks. Somebody will have to win to take on the Sixers. Both of these teams have been a shocker this season. Not much playoff experience at all for these two teams. For the Knicks, they've already won over the NBA with their regular season accomplishments. Seven straight losing seasons. The Knicks have won more games this season. We're at a record of 41-31 and 31 than the last two seasons combined with 38 wins and 110 losses. Tom Thibodeau deserves head coach of the year for the turnaround that he has done. It's incredible. With a roster of 12 first-round picks, the picks have finally panned out to make tremendous strides throughout the course of the season. Joyous Randall having his best season of his career for the Knicks, averaging over 24 points per game, over 10 rebounds per game. He's the favorite to win most improved player of the year. R.J. Barrett. He has just improved as well in his sophomore season, improving his three game. And Emmanuel quickly, what a steal in the 2020 draft for the rookie from Kentucky. 11 points per game. He is averaging under 20 minutes played per game this season in his first year for quickly. For the Hawks, they acquired a couple of veterans here in the offseason to get them over the hump and into the playoffs. For Atlanta, 
as they make their first playoff appearance since 2017. Clint Capella acquired in the offseason, top rebounder in the NBA this season. Nate McMillan took over as head coach after a 14 and 20 start by Paul by uh, by Lloyd Pierce. He has completely turned it around for McMillan. John Collins has been terrific this season. Trey Young, great as always, averaging around 25 points per game. And then add in Gallinari, a vet, along with Bogdan Bogdanovic. And this should be a terrific series here with these two teams fighting it out to see who will win a playoff series. The Knicks swept the Hawks in the regular season 3-0. But in this playoff series, I think it's going to be a close one, much closer than what the season series was. I'm going to take the number one defense in the NBA with the New York Knicks winning a playoff series 4-3 over Atlanta. I've got Knicks taking on the Sixers in the second round. Now I'll move on to the next playoff series. This is going to be a good one. The number three seed, the Milwaukee Bucks taking on the number six seed, the Miami Heat. Milwaukee, they are dangerous from the perimeter when they start dropping threes. They haven't dealt with much injuries this season. It's been great for the team chemistry. Drew Holiday, he has been a difference maker. Lockdown defender, major offseason acquisition for the Bucks. Big time upgrade over Eric Bledsoe. Chris Middleton, Playing with confidence this season. He struggled in the bubble last season trying to find a groove this season, though. He's making a ton of tough shots lately for Middleton. And Giannis has improved his game as well. And he has been quietly, once again, in the MVP conversation for another season in a row. Last season, the Bucks had four players averaging double figures. This season, they got seven. Off-season additions, off the bench. Bobby Portis, Bryn Forbes have been huge off the bench, shooting greater than 44% from three. Now they have the chance to prove themselves here in this playoff for Milwaukee as the Bucks have struggled to, def to defend the perimeter. But they're going to face a Heat team that's in the bottom five of the offense in the league. So for Miami here, the Heat, if they want to make it a deep run, they have to rejolt this offense and regain confidence with some of their youngsters in the team. Tyler Hero had a terrific playoffs last year that ignited the run all the way to the finals. Hero has struggled this season. If they want to get back to last season's playoff form, Tyler Hero is going to step up along with Goran Dragic, Kendrick Nunn, Andre Iguodala, Duncan Robinson. As uh, These guys need to really start balling like they were last season where their team chemistry was going off. Miami has been playing well as of late. As this should be a good series, Bam Adebayo should be able to stick with Giannis inside but this matchup here because of what the Bucks offer this season they are just different I feel like for Milwaukee because of Drew Holiday Drew Holiday has been a difference maker this season for Milwaukee and I believe that he will stay that way in the series here so I've got the Bucks this season reversing the curse and taking it over the heat as I will take Milwaukee here with Drew Holiday being a, a big big factor and the reason why the Bucks will win this series is I've got the Bucks in six winning 4 to 2 over Miami. And now we'll take a look at the next matchup. The number two seed, the Brooklyn Nets, will take on the number seven seed, the Washington Wizards. Now, on paper, the Nets here are stacked with a big three, but we've still yet to see this being played out throughout the course of time. KD, Kyrie, James Harden, they've only played seven games together throughout the season. James Harden, in my opinion, the most important player in the court for Brooklyn for what he can do, facilitate the ball, open up the spacing on the court for KD and Kyrie. With James Harden in the court, Brooklyn is 29-7. and Harden almost averaged a triple-double back in the month of March where the Nets went 11-2 and with him. Defensively, of course, Brooklyn still has a ton of questions. Somebody's going to have to need a slow down Brooklyn, though, to beat this Nets team, and that does not seem like it's going to be the Washington Wizards. Now, I expect this series to have a bunch of games that go into the 120s plus in scoring. The Wizards allow over 118 points per game, which is last in points allowed in the NBA. This series will be fun. It will be a shootout. I do predict that Washington will take one game, but that is it, as I've got the Nets to win the first round series 4-1. to one over the Wizards and take on the Bucks in a terrific second round matchup. So now we'll move back to the Western Conference second round. The number eight seed, the LA Lakers, and the all LA second round will take on the number four seed, the LA Clippers. LeBron, AD, Dennis Schroeder back out to help the Lakers if all three are, are still healthy by this point. Their role players going to have to step up for LA. Playoff Rondo 
He is now on the Clippers as I feel like he could be potentially a difference maker in this matchup going against his former team, the Lakers. The Clippers are effective from three. They are number one in shooting the three ball at 41% from the perimeter as a team. The Lakers struggle from three, 24th in the NBA in three-point shooting. Never count out LeBron though in the playoffs, but at this point in the playoffs, I am concerned by the amount of games that the Lakers could have possibly played on the schedule. That could be like every other day games going on. So if the Lakers do go what I predict here of them playing the potential of of at most nine games heading into this matchup, then they could be burnt out by this time for the Lakers unless they keep on getting stronger and stronger and stronger. But they're playing every other day, and it's not a good sign for a team dealing with injuries. I expect them to go deep into that Utah series. They had it in seven in that series. The Lakers going to have to need their role players to have a chance here to take, take, take the load off of LeBron and Anthony Davis throughout this playoffs. But I do like the Clippers here. I feel like the Clippers have the Lakers number. The Clippers have beat the Lakers by an average of 16 points per game through three games this season. I'm going to take the Clippers in this matchup as they are well-rested heading into the playoffs. As I like them in the second round. I got the Clippers in seven, four to three over the Lakers. And now, who will meet up against the Clippers in the Western Conference Finals? As we got a big time showdown between two perimeter studs here Curry versus Dame, matching up in a six versus seven showdown between Portland and Golden State. Both of these te teams finding late game momentum towards the end of the season. Golden State won the last eight out of nine games, which includes a six game winning streak. Portland winning the last 10 out of 12 games. Portland leads the season series 2-1. Steph Curry, though, he scored a career-high 62 points against the Blazers on January 2nd. I predict here that the difference in the series will be Golden State's improved defense. The Achilles heel for Portland has been their defense this season. feel like Steph Curry will keep it going and carrying in this matchup for Steph to just have an incredible playoffs for Golden State. I've got the Warriors. Winning this series in six, four to two Golden State over Portland to play in the Western Conference Finals against the LA Clippers. Now back to the right side of the bracket, Eastern Conference second round. The Philadelphia 76ers will take on the New York Knicks. The Sixers swept the Knicks throughout the regular season, but the last two matchups were determined by a combined four points. The thing was is that Joel Embiid did not play in those last two games, and the Knicks lost both of them. The concern for the Knicks is that they don't have much playoff experience going up against a Philadelphia team that has been to the playoffs multiple times from basically the same roster that they have had throughout these seasons with Embiid and Ben Simmons. Now, when Embiid did play, the one game that he did play, Joel Embiid scored 27 points, added in 10 rebounds as the Sixers beat the Knicks 109-89. to and I feel like Embiid in this series will be a difference maker here. So I will take Philadelphia in this series to beat the Knicks as I've got the Sixers winning in five, four to one over New York. So the Sixers in the Eastern Conference Finals, who will they face? The number two seed, the Brooklyn Nets, and the number three seed, the Milwaukee Bucks. What a series here, I expect. I think this one has potential to very well go into seven. Brooklyn played Milwaukee twice in early May. The Nets could not close it out in the fourth quarter. KD struggled in the fourth quarter, hit rim short a couple of times in the final couple minutes or so. KD and Kyrie, no James Harden in both of those games. The Bucks interior defense made plays late, and that was the difference. Milwaukee has multiple scores on their roster, and I feel like the Bucks can keep up with Brooklyn with scoring. For Brooklyn... They made 37 three-point shots through those two games in early May against Milwaukee. Giannis scored 49 and 36 points for the Bucks, while KD scored 42 and 32 points. I feel like this is going to be a classic matchup, second round. Seven-game series written all over it for this one. The Bucks are playing desperate, trying to give themselves a reputation of finally being a playoff team after all the years of early exits, while the Nets are as well. They're playing for something to not be a massive disappointment in this playoffs here. But for the Nets, they're going to have to be able to stop the interior, be much better in the interior. And I feel like throughout this playoffs, I think that they're going to be able to find that somehow in these playoffs for the Brooklyn Nets. This series, it will be a shootout going to seven, I predict here. But I will take Brooklyn in this playoff series in seven over Milwaukee and what should be a classic Eastern Conference second round. 
And now we'll move on to the conference finals. Left side of the screen, the Western Conference Finals. Steph Curry and the number seven seeded Golden State Warriors, I predict, will find their way to the Western Conference Finals to take on the four seed, the LA Clippers. Curry made nine threes during the second meeting against the Clippers off a of back to back. But during the first and third meetings, Curry was held to just 2 for 14 from the perimeter, scoring a combined 27 points in those two losses against the Clippers. That marked Curry's second and third lowest point scoring totals of this season. The Clippers have a dog of a defender with Pat Beverly, who's going to be put to work defending Curry. Other players going to have to step up in this game for Golden State to have a chance to take off the load off of Curry. For the Clippers here, they got balance on the team. as uh, They are as well looking to prove themselves throughout pl the playoffs here. Looking to get redemption in the last season's second round exit. And prove that they can go to the first ever NBA Finals in franchise history. And I will take in this matchup here, the Clippers. I feel like by this rate, Curry will be cold off against the Clippers team that has defenders all over the place on the court here. So I will take the Clippers in the six over Golden State to make it to the NBA Finals. So the four seed Clippers in the finals, who will they face? The Eastern Conference Finals between the number one seed Philadelphia 76ers versus the number two seed the Brooklyn Nets. This being a battle of the top two seeds in the East. Brooklyn doesn't have a rim prote protector and that sparks trouble when going up against a dominant big like Joel Embiid. Philadelphia has defenders. Brooklyn has superstar scores. This should be a good series as well. And Bead, I feel like we'll have a massive series. But the Sixers, with their weak link, with their offense, be able to find some firepower and put them on top. They're not strong from three-point range. They're bottom five in the NBA and three-point shooting percentage as everything is done inside. Brooklyn is number two in perimeter shooting, knocking down over 39% of their shots from the outside. I predict here in this difference in this matchup to be Brooklyn's firepower. I feel like the Brooklyn Nets are just going to get more and more just dangerous throughout these playoffs here if all three of the big three are healthy. And that's where I predict the firepower to come from Brooklyn to put the Nets over the top. 4-2, to two, Brooklyn in six, I predict in the series over Philadelphia to send the Nets to move on to the NBA Finals. And that's where the Clippers will meet the Bucks. The four seed in the West, LA Clippers, or the Clippers will meet the Nets. The four seeded Clippers will meet the number two seed, the Brooklyn Nets, in the NBA Finals. Superstar loaded finals here with Kawhi and Paul George for the Clippers going up against KD, Kyrie, and James Harden for the Nets. Both of these teams have a point to prove to make this a deep run. The Clippers looking for redemption after blowing last season's 3-1 series lead in the second round. The Denver Nets are the odds on favorite and not making it to the NBA Finals for Brooklyn. It would be a massive bust with a big three that they have. Brooklyn took the series 2-0 in the regular season with both in the Nets wins by four points. The Clippers have balance on both sides of the basketball while in the Nets, they are just explosive offensively. The difference here, I predict, is Brooklyn getting scarier and scarier in the playoffs when the big three, if they do stay healthy and keep on playing games together, they're just going to keep on getting more reps and more reps and more reps, and it's going to lead to Kevin Durant getting stronger and stronger and stronger throughout the playoffs when you're playing basically like every other day or so. And if they all if they all remain healthy, that will give Brooklyn a prime opportunity to win this season's title. And I believe that will be the case for the Brooklyn Nets, as I've got the Brooklyn Nets winning their first ever NBA championship. I predict the NBA Finals MVP to be Kevin Durant, as I predict that he's going to make a monster comeback in these playoffs after missing last season. I've got Brooklyn in six, winning the series 4-2 to two over the LA Clippers. So that's a wrap here to this video. My 2021 NBA playoff predictions. Make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe to my channel. Let me know your predictions in the comments section down below as well. Be sure to check out my play-by-play -play live streams throughout the playoffs. Giving in-game commentary of the action. Something that you definitely don't want to miss. If you've never been in one of my live streams before, I would definitely recommend it. Thanks so much for watching everybody as this is Behind Eric Basketball.